Hi, my name is Mike Simons with Abode Energy Management, and I'm going to talk to you today about the economics of air source heat pumps. Um, we're going to do this video a little bit like uh, if you've ever seen a movie and it begins at the end. Uh, we'll kind of show you exactly what this is going to be looking like. So the De Massachusetts Department of Energy Resources last year, they put out a chart that says exactly how much it's going to cost with each of the different types of fossil fuels. With it, you would find that natural gas is relatively cheap, electric resistance wildly expensive, and air source heat pumps as well as home heating oil is everywhere in between. So when we're looking at this chart over here, we would see that electric resistance is over $4,000, while air source heat pumps are listed at close to $1,500, which is kind of surprising because they're both using electricity to heat. So why is one form of electricity costing you know, th over three times as much as the other? Well, how air source heat pumps work is they use electricity to pump heat from one location to the other. So in our region, in the wintertime, they're pumping heat and pumping energy from outside to inside, and they're doing this from the refrigeration process. That's why when we're looking at that chart, we're seeing that it's over three times more efficient, which is what does get it cost competitive to the other fossil fuels. What this number doesn't show is that uh, the performance is not always linear. So when there's a lot of energy outside, like when it's 40 degrees outside, a heat pump can work really, really efficiently. But say if it's five degrees outside or negative five degrees outside, there's a lot less energy and the heat pump has to work a lot harder to move that energy to the inside. What I have in front of me right now is the product catalog of a manufacturer whose heat pumps are widely used in New England. So over here we see the listed coefficient of performance at 5 degrees from various different models and over here we see it listed at negative 5 degrees for various models. On this page over here we could be seeing the same models again and the coefficient of performance is all just one fixed number. Instead of relying on the manufacturer's marketing material to try and figure out what the efficiency is of these systems, a really great resource for everyone in New England is the Northeast Energy Efficiency Partnerships Air Source Heat Pump Product Database. What's so amazing with this as a resource is you can punch in any heat pump model number from any manufacturer and you can figure out exactly how that equipment is going to be performing at pretty much any given temperature. If you're looking at a submittal from the NEEP database for the first time, there's a lot of information on it. But I think one piece of information that we really want to focus on today is just the coefficient of performance. What's so good about this as a resource is we can look at the heating at 47 degrees and see that it has a coefficient of performance of 4. As the temperature drops down to 17 degrees, we'll see the coefficient of performance has dropped down to 2.64. So what that means is that if you're putting in one unit of energy at 47 degrees, you're going to get out four units of heat. And at negative 15 degrees, you're putting in one unit of energy and you're still getting out nearly two units of heat. With this chart, what I put together was all of the heating data in Worcester over the course of the last 10 years. So say if we were to go and look at 27 degrees, at 27 degrees over the course of the last 10 years, there is over 2,000 hours at that temperature. We'll say at negative 15 degrees, there was about zero hours, and at 48 degrees, there was about uh, 2,000 hours as well. So when we are thinking about heat pump performance, what we should be most concerned about if we are looking at this chart is really how is that heat pump performing really between here and here where we do have the most amount of hours. So as I am thinking about this chart and I'm thinking about heat pump performance, what I'm trying to imagine is how to design a heat pump that is going to have the highest coefficient of performance over the period where we have the highest hourly need for heat. Now if we are to map the heat pump's performance, which is in the green, the green line, over all of those, all of those hours at different temperatures, we would see that the heat pump is going to be wildly efficient in how many BTUs it's going to be using, particularly at these temperatures between 40 degrees and 60 degrees. And one of the reasons why it looks so favorable is because at 50 degrees, you really don't need that much energy to get up to 70 degrees. And that's also when the heat pump is running most efficient. As the temperature does start to get colder than that, we'll see that it is going to peak on how many BTUs you're going to be required 
particular in between these hours of 20 degrees all the way up to the 40 degrees. This is where we just talked about of paying very close attention to how the heat pump is going to be performing. We'll see as the temperature gets lower and lower, yes, the heat pump is using more energy, but that becomes very marginal and it becomes next to nothing, particularly once we do reach down into the single digits. Going back to what we first talked about, how much heat pumps cost in relation to other fuels, this is what the next chart has. So we have the same exact weather data of um, over the course of the year, how many BTUs the heat pump is going to require, and we can see it versus electric resistance and propane and home heating oil and natural gas. So the green line is going to be the heat pumps, yellow line is going to be electric resistance, black line's home heating oil, green line's going to be natural gas, and the purple line is going to be propane. With this chart, we'll see how much each of these different fossil fuels and the heat pump are going to cost at each particular degree. If we just look at this chart, it should be very obvious to see that the electric resistance the propane is all going to be considered wildly expensive compared to the other fuels. If we look at home heating oil, we would see that it's always also going to be more expensive than a heat pump, even down into the single digits. With the heat pump, it's going to be kind of sandwiched as far as cost effectiveness right between home heating oil and natural gas. And at some point, even with today's market rates, the heat pump is going to be actually cheaper to run than a natural gas based system. But right now when we are looking at this and looking at today's fuel prices, natural gas is going to be the most affordable. However, fuel prices do change and it wouldn't take much to make that heat pump the most cost effective solution for heating your home in New England. So the key takeaway with the last slide, I believe, is that heat pumps are cost effective to run here in Massachusetts. The operating costs are well within the margin of error as home heating oil or natural gas. So one utility or oil shortage uh, could very well change the economics to have heat pumps being the most favorable source of heat. Where heat pumps really do win and really do shine is this final thing. And this is why so many people, including myself, are really excited about heat pumps. Sticking with the same chart and the same colors, one thing that has changed is instead of looking at the cost effectiveness of each of the different energy sources, now we're just going to be looking at the CO2 emissions. With an air source heat pump, which is the green line, we'll see that no matter what temperature it is outside, there's going to be significantly less pounds of CO2 emissions that's going to be generated. Significantly better than natural gas, significantly better than propane, home heating oil, or electric resistance. And this is true even as we do approach down into the single digits when this heat pump is tied to today's grid. The coefficient of performance of heat pumps not only reduces the price of them to operate by one-third, but it also reduces their carbon impact by one-third compared to using electric resistance. And one thing that's true about Massachusetts is we have really aggressive climate goals heading into 2050. So pretty much every year that you're running the air source heat pump, they're going to get cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. First natural gas, propane, or home heating oil, where the emissions is always going to be fixed. So if you are concerned about our environment, if you are concerned about sustainability, heating in Massachusetts with an air source heat pump is certainly the way to go. If you're interested in continuing to explore how heat pumps would work for you and your home, please contact us at Abode Energy Management. Thank you.